What's up, my friends? We're in for a treat today. I am here with Mikhail Vega, who is a former Navy SEAL and has been on the front lines even since he's um, gotten back in helping veterans, helping spread awareness. And I just can't wait to get into your story about this massive problem that we have and some of the solutions that you're pioneering um, to help correct uh, what's going on with the troops after they come back from war. So welcome to the show and uh, let's get right into it, man. Hey, thanks for having me. For sure. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your your combat history and, and kind of your story, what you went through, and because uh, that's always a good place to start. Yeah, uh, I'll try to keep it brief. Um, I joined the military in 89, and I went into the explosive ordnance disposal community. That is basically your bomb squad. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for about nine years in support of SEAL platoons and stuff like that. And, uh, and I really was drawn to that, uh, more aggressive side of things, I'd say. And, uh, I think there was a lot of influence from my father. He was a SEAL as well. And so I went to SEAL training when I was 28 and that was class 224. Uh, went to SEAL teammate and pretty much stayed there for an extended period of time for about almost uh i think uh, almost 11 years mm -hmm. and uh i did multiple tours um uh, bosnia haiti uh, albania zaire uh, iraq and with the a lot of people two, don't even know that we were iraq. doing anything in those countries <laughs> we're like what, what were you doing in those countries we didn't even know oh, you know it was just uh not much, not much. <laughs> just hanging out <laughs> catching some different not foods much. some street vendors you know, <laughs> you know checking out stuff. the local smash sandwiches. <laughs> uh -huh. Indeed, we get it. <laughs> but um, but then uh, two tours in Iraq, and um, you know that's where all the action happened. First tour I did, I was the shift leader for the uh, number two during the interim democratic elections, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know to get a break from that, we'd go do direct action missions and stuff like that and uh i got hit by a roadside ied uh, that first that first uh deployment it wasn't um it didn't it, it low ordered meaning it didn't function completely uh so i was in the turret of a humvee and it and just slammed me over uh to the side of the turret knocked me unconscious for a little bit and, you know i woke back up and some dude's punching me in the leg and i'm Stop hitting me. And he's like, well, answer me. Are you okay? And I'm like, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, so, but, and we, you know, got off the X and just keep, kept going forward. But when I got back, you know, like, like my back started, um, locking up and I got like this really bad earache. Nobody could see anything wrong with it. None of us put two and two together at the time. And it was a, um, you know, so after a few weeks, the pain started going away, you know, and uh, I mean, it, and when I say pain, it was like, it was intense. Yeah. I don't think, a, really I don't think intense. a seal says pain unless they actually mean it. So I think, I think uh, we, I yeah, think we it, was, it was, it was pretty bad. And, yeah. um, and so like I had, I, I yeah, it was bad. Um, well, so, let me, let me so stop I just kept you, going and stuff right slowly there. started to go away and, you know, I kept going on about my about my business and operating and, and getting after it uh second tour in iraq um we we was a lot more combat heavy uh than the first tour i mean there's a couple of little things the first tour but the second tour was like dream come true deployment for a for an operator and um uh it was when i came back from that one that i started to notice uh, some some issues mm -hmm. uh one of which was i couldn't sleep for four days at a pop it was uh wow you know and and so after a while of that you know it was uh and then i had this i had this feeling like uh you know a buddy of mine was killed over there and um his name's mike coke 
uh, he was my swim buddy in SEAL training. Swim buddy is somebody who goes through the training with you. Mm-hmm. And um, you got to stay side by side and you learn everything about the individual. You, know, you become closer than like family members, basically. Right. They know your strengths, your weaknesses, and, you know, bolster each other up. <clears throat> but, um, and so he got killed over there. So that was a heavy blow for me. We've, we've lost a number of SEALs over there in 31. It's hard. But this one was like, you know, the knockout. Mm. And uh, you know, had a really hard time with that for a long time. Still, I mean, still comes up, obviously. But, uh, but so uh, one thing led to another. And, and uh, I, I just started to, uh, I was starting to spiral down. You know, start drinking, start, you know, doing all these other things that, you uh, don't really help you you know you think that it does at the time or at least i did and um and but inside i was just train wrecked and that started to and then and then i I would throughout this whole period i was dealing with these recurring like uh, spasms in my back and i'd turn my head and like it would be like somebody hit me with a lightning bolt and i'd be like oh you know and i'd be hardly be able to breathe and, and um like what the hell is going on? So I go into pain clinics, and they're putting you on pain meds, and they're they're shooting you up, and you know um, all those things start to have a synergistic effect, and <clears throat> and it it really started to you know uh, come to a head near the end there. That uh, you know it seems like it was like the perfect storm. Mm. Uh, you know there was financial issues. My my. Uh, I had to take emergency custody of my son because because uh, his mother abused him, and you know, and in order for me to do that, I had to step out of my SEAL platoon that was getting ready to deploy again. I had guys that were um, I was the platoon chief at the time, and I had to basically choose between the two, and uh, that was that was very difficult. It's basically like choosing between your two families. Right. Which one do you want? You know, and uh, so. Uh, in order for me to get custody of my son, the state told me that uh, um, I had to take a desk job. And the only place there was one was on the West Coast. So uh, we moved over to the West Coast. And, um, you know, that's where some the physiological uh, symptoms started to show up. I lost, uh, you know, my 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 upper right pec started to atrophy. I was like taking hard rights, like I'd get up and I'd lose my balance and I'd fall down and, you know, like mm-hmm. ridiculous stuff. And, and, uh, so I went in and, uh, they go, Oh, it looks like you had a fracture of your neck, a C6. And, you know, and I'm like, huh? And they go, do you think, can you think of anything that might've happened? I was like, Oh yeah, I have an idea. Yeah. Maybe when they blew <laughs> yeah. me up, that might have, there was happened. a little IED blast that might have, might have helped that along yeah <laughs> but uh <laughs> but uh so so basically i was running around on a busted neck for about five years and and i uh you know so they did neurosurgery and they found vestibular damage ulnar nerve damage you know but um i tell you all these things just to give you uh some background but there's some guys out there that are just you know that have had have lost much much more and um and they're still stuck and, and or guys that haven't lost nearly as much and 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 are still stuck mm-hmm. and and we'll get into that in a little bit but and, as to why that's why i think why anyway mm-hmm. um so so they did neurosurgery and everything and then they had me on all these different pills they had me on antidepressants they had me on uh stimulants they had me on uh amphetamines they had me on painkillers sleeping pills I mean, you name it, man. I was probably on it at some point. Yeah, walking farm. At one point, I was on like 13 different medications. And so so I went and uh, I was teaching uh, I was teaching demolitions out of uh, San Clemente Island. And and they, uh, I got off the plane and like I started going to like uh, self-diagnosed, of course, uh, cardiac arrest because I, I like everything was closing in and and I, I couldn't breathe. I had chest pain. I had, and then all the students ran up and they're like, "Chief, are you okay?" And I'm like, "I think I'm dying." 
like, what do you want us to do? I was like, nothing. Let's just get it over with. And it was really a sense of relief hmm. that I was feeling at the time. It's just, you know, that's where I was. Yeah, things were that bad. It was that bad. And uh, and then, and then uh, you know, I, I, I went and laid down, didn't die, obviously. Hmm. And uh, you had a greater purpose, had, my friend. What's that? You had a greater purpose than that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and that's what I come to realize as well. Um, and so, so what happened was I finally started to feel something this whole time going through this whole thing. It was like, I was completely devoid of emotion it, except for like the occasional bout of rage. And, um, it was, I started to feel this, uh, this, this feeling of rejection or like, like, like I was cast aside and I, I know that's not a reality, you know, and, uh, but that's how I felt. Mm. And, and it was like, and then I also felt betrayed, you know, betrayed by these psychiatric industries that take like 45 minutes, give you a diagnosis, pump you full of these, you know, poisons basically, and, and send you on your way just so they could put a feather in their hat. You know, are all psychiatrists like that? No, I don't think so. But uh, that was my experience with the ones I encountered. Sure. You know, and then and then it's like, it, it's interesting. So they put you on these pills and, and they go, okay, so how is this pill working? Well, I don't feel anything. I don't notice anything. Okay, up the dose. Okay, so, and then they you know, go in the next day. It's like, oh, they go, um, well, how are you feeling now? Well, now, you know, I can't, I, I, I can't function. In, in this area, or I can't function here, oh, you know. And it's like, thing, oh, we well, have here, another pill for pill. that. Yeah, <laughs> take this pill for that. You know, I'm pretty soon you're on all those medications. So I kind of like revolted against the system. Uh, they were medically discharging me because of the because of the injuries, and um, I got the uh, um, combat stress diagnosis on top of the you know the mild traumatic brain injury and you know all this other stuff. So. Um, and it was like, okay, well, not only did I not know what the hell I was going to do, um, you know, and that exasperated the, the whole situation because I was feeling that whole cast aside thing. It was like, okay, fine. We'll do what we do. You know, you know we're not going to crumple. It, was, it looked like a fight to me. So I was like, okay. So I started doing my own thing. And they're like, well, you're not showing up for your psychiatric appointments. We're going to call your command. I was like, fine, call them. What are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Send me out of the military. I'm not taking your pills anymore. I'm not coming to your, I'm not going to sit there and talk about my negative garbage with you mm -hmm. and, and, and amplify that in my life anymore. I'm, I'm going to go do stuff that makes me feel better. So what I did was I went and I started to do something that I did earlier for performance reasons. And everything with Vital Warrior has a dual purpose. It's a, it's a, it's a performance and, and, recovery system all built in one and um it's uh so so i went and i did my what's called myofascial release mm -hmm. and it's called rolfing picture rolfing like torture but they don't ask you any questions <laughs> right. you know so they're like i'm, I'm they're well like aware digging of the phenomenon hard yeah it's, they dig in hard i don't know if you've ever experienced I it have. But, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful pain but it it's it'll, a get, you, it'll pain get you to sweat effects, but, i've been in effect. i've been in submission holds doing jujitsu that i've tapped out way quicker than some of the pain <laughs> from ralphing <laughs> except tapping doesn't matter they're like oh that's interesting why are you flopping around like that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> they uh they, they they there's some intense uh some intense work going on there, mm -hmm. but, but the effects are tremendous, you know? Um, so, so I started doing that and, uh, and from that I found acupuncture and I started doing acupuncture and then I did, um, then I found yoga and I went to Bikram yoga mm -hmm. and I walked in there and like, you know, you know, you're in for a ride when they go, all you got to do is not leave the room. And I'm like, holy, what the <laughs> heck's good. And then this little five foot girl kicked my ass all over the place, you know, so and I'm just like a puddle on the ground going, oh, <laughs> you know, so that the room, if you're unfamiliar, the room is like, what, 120 degrees yeah, and uh, something you're in there. I don't know if it's quite that hot, but it's super hot. Yeah. Yeah. 
it, it, it's up there or 100 and it, it's 100 it's up there yeah um i think they say it's 115 but it's like 130 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the wind chill factor but it's like the, it's like the stinky feet factor in a, in a yoga room yeah. it increases it by 15 degrees that's funny but um but yeah so so i did that for a while but then i started wanting something deeper you know what i mean i still felt like i was missing this thing mm-hmm. that i had this space that i that i needed to fill with something and um so I started seeking that out, and I found uh, meditation. And so through my study of meditation, I, I started to uh, learn about this energy, what, what this called kundalini. Mm-hmm. And kundalini is basically the creative force, a man's creative or a woman's creative force. And, um, and so I was like, okay, I'm all about that. Let's do that. I need, to, I need more creative force to offset the destructive forces that I've culminated over a lifetime of war. And so I started looking at this. There, there's this yoga out there called Kundalini Yoga. And I was in San Diego and I was looking for um, somebody that was a teacher of this. And I went to a number of people and it was just, I knew inherently that it was not what I was looking for that it was not being taught properly, right. that there was something out there. And so I went and I eventually got out and we moved up to LA and, you know, because I wanted to pursue my acting career, which is, I've been bl- extremely blessed um, in that aspect as well. But um, so, so I got up here and, and I'm going to a voice coach and he's got a uh, beautiful singer um, and she comes out. I was like, wow. You sounded incredible. And I was like, how come you're not, where are you performing? And she's like, no, I'm a kundalini yoga teacher. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Why are the like, kundalini yoga instructors blazing hot? I don't know. <laughs> That's like a, it's like a worldwide phenomenon where kundalini yoga instructors are I nines or yeah. tens. <laughs> well, doesn't I can make tell you sense. why. It's because of the energy that they're cultivating. It's yeah. not just their look. It's their it's, it's their projection. Yeah, it's the aura. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, so. He goes, I'm a Kundalini yoga teacher. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, you're a Kundalini yoga <laughs> I've, I've heard that a million times. <laughs> and, uh, and she goes, yeah, you should come to my class. It's at the uh, Kundalini yoga studio up here. And I go, what? There's a Kundalini yoga studio. Now I'm, like, interested because it sounds legit. they got a studio. All right, I'll go check it out. I go in there, man, and I'm laying there, and they're doing this. They do a gong at the end. And I hear, <laughs> believe it or not, I hear this voice that goes, you're going to spread this energy across the world. And it was like, it startled me. Like I, I like look and I'm like looking at him and there was nothing there. And I was like, Holy wow. Wow. Okay. This is the stuff. And I got up and I was like, I was, <laughs> I couldn't drive for two hours afterwards. Cause I was just like, so high. That's the only thing I can say. I was just so high on whatever energy came through. I went up to the teacher and I go, Hey, I want to become a, uh, a teacher. This is my first class. And um, I was like, I, I, I'm supposed to become a teacher. And she goes, well, you don't want to come here to go to teacher. You want to, you want to go see Hadi Jeevan. I was like, okay. She literally did the Jedi mind trick thing. I mean, even she even waved her fingers, I think. Mm. Uh, <laughs> these aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> but, uh, but so I go, okay, I want to go see Hadi Jeevan. And I go into Hadi Jeevan's class, another place. It's in a whole other place. And, uh, we sit down, never talked to this person before in my life, right? He starts a class, and we start this first thing called Breath of Fire. And, and he stops, and he looks at me, and he goes, you're going to spread this energy all across the world. What? I was like, what? what? Oh. You guys are tuned into the same frequency. Yeah, I was like, damn. So, so, I, um, so I've been doing it ever since. I became a, I became a teacher. I... Uh, and I, it became the core of what Vital Warrior is today. And so um, I teach veterans classes here in Los Angeles. Um, it's free for veterans. Uh, and we do a number of things in the Southern California area as well. We'll get into that in a minute. But, uh, and so, so that whole progress, what has happened is, is that I've learned that, and this is important for you know, any other veterans that may be listening to this out there, whether, wherever you're stuck or whatever you have experienced. Um, and I know this may be difficult for some, 
Uh, some may already be well beyond this. I'm sure they are. But there is a, you have been given these life experiences to incorporate into your life. The problem with the psychiatrists and, and the system in trying to address the effects of combat-related stress is, uh, is uh, very multi-layered uh, in, in the way that they're going about finding an answer. Uh, first of which is that they're trying to get you to be the way you are, were before those experiences, which completely robs you of the opportunity to incorporate those experiences into your life and thereby creating a power that you never would have had otherwise. So in, in essence, those experiences are blessings because they give you, without adversity, there won't be any change because it's only through by pushing through that adversity and overcoming that you have lasting change, change in character, change in projection, change in mental capacity change in physical capacity, whatever it is your goal is or whatever your path you've been set upon, the only way that you're going to progress along that path is by persevering through adversity. Mm. So One of my favorite quotes is from Carlos Castaneda, and he says, for the ordinary person, everything is a blessing or a curse. For the warrior, there are only challenges. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so... And that's what I also found is that, um, so, so another thing with the pills is that there's no exit strategy. They put you on the pills and there's never an exit strategy. Sure there uh -huh. is. Your liver will fail and you'll die. <laughs> that's the yeah. exit strategy. You'll go away. And speaking of dying, 22 veterans a day are killing themselves. Why is that? I think personally, because of where I was, I think that it has a lot to do with those medications they have us on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us turn to that because we've been programmed to, we've been programmed that way. We don't know where else to turn, that there are other alternatives for us to seek out to uh, address these things. Another thing is they'd like to have us believe is that these, these events are, a dis the way we respond to these events are a disorder of some sort. Well, it's not post-traumatic stress disorder. You'll see on our site it's uh, post-traumatic stress. And the only time we ever use post-traumatic stress disorder in any acronym or way, shape, or form is just because that's what mainstream, that's the breakthrough yeah. program. That's all it is, is to, to overcome the, uh, and reach into the pool of people that um, see it as a disorder and get our message in there that it's not. What it is, it's a normal physiological response to abnormal conditions. So it doesn't matter if it was a combat-related incident that caused your adrenals to start firing or if you're a professional athlete that's at the top of their game uh, that causes your adrenals to fatigue. It doesn't matter if it's a car wreck or um, some type of an assault or, or surgery even. It doesn't matter. Uh, the body doesn't care. The phys the The... The organism itself does not care uh, the cause of um, that, that excess cortisol or stress hormone in the mm -hmm. body. What happens is in those situations, when we're constantly dumping cortisol into the system and the adrenals are overactive, it puts a stress on uh, the brain's production of serotonin to create melatonin to suppress the adrenal system so you can get into stage three and four sleep. Stage three and four sleep is where you start to repair, start to balance, start to even mild traumatic brain injuries start to repair themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you if you rob the, if you have an overactive adrenal system, the melatonin requirement to suppress that adrenal system is much higher. Well, melatonin is created from serotonin. Serotonin is the body's feel-good drug. So when melatonin is in high demand, it creates uh, a deficit in the brain of serotonin to, to meet that demand. Well, eventually everything runs out and you're not creating melatonin. And then and the adrenals start to fatigue and then you, 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 your thyroid starts to take up uh, the function of the and that's what's called metabolic syndrome. I was in metabolic syndrome. And 
I got up to like 290 pounds. Everything I could, I did like, it, it was a mess. You start retaining all this, all these fluids. And it, it's just, it's a train wreck. And that's why you see a lot of these people that are, are these combat veterans that are uh, extremely overweight, you know, they, because they can't, they're, they're stuck in a, in a cycle. You put those pills on top of the, an already suppressed system, you, oh, you oppress an already suppressed system. Well, mm -hmm. Get 22 veteran suicides a day you know so yeah i think you know um, the way that you're framing it is really really valuable as just a normal response to abnormal conditions i mean the body is designed to make adaptations to, based upon our environment and you know if all of a sudden you're riding around and it's everything's like usual and then bam you know a bomb goes off out of nowhere you know, your body has no way of predicting that. It had no signs that that was going to happen. So something like that and some, some of these other things as well. And I know all everything cumulatively contributes. But then the body's thinking, when am I safe? Where am I safe? This bomb went off from fucking nowhere, you know. And so it, it has nothing to learn from that. So, you know, these repeated instances of that and then trauma of losing a friend and everything else that you see it's a normal response. The body is trying to say, we don't know when the next shitty thing is going to happen. So, you know, we're going to be on high alert at all times. I mean, it just makes sense that any animal organism would respond that way. And then, but there are modalities, especially when you stack them together, that can start to unwind that, you know, I mean, start to retrain the body's processes. But to do that, you have to find a place of stillness. You have to shut off that overactive, overprotective part of your brain. And that's what something like Kundalini yoga can do or sensory deprivation tanks or, um, you know, some of the other promising work that's coming out for PTSD. Well, here's, here's the, the gist of Vital Warrior. So keeping in mind the aforementioned cycle, uh, spiral, I should say, um, into uh, combat-related stress or post-traumatic stress, um, and, and subsequently adrenal fatigue and, uh, metabolic syndrome. Um, so when we have low serotonin, when we have low serotonin in our body because of that high melatonin requirement to suppress that adrenal system so we can get into stage three and four sleep, what, what kind of symptoms is that? Well, it's irritability cognitive deficit, uh, memory loss, um, insomnia, you know, those, those just so happen to be what psychiatrists label, uh, the top symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. when in fact it's a normal response like we were just talking about. Right. So keeping that in mind, what we do at Vital Warrior, and, and see, I just started to put these things together, and so so I just started to do things that made me feel better, and so I was seeing a combat psychologist, and he uh, he's like, he goes, what is it you're doing, because you're like making these progress, like that's, wh what are you doing, so I told him, and then he had me go see a doctor and tell him what I was doing, the doctor analyzed these things, and uh, he's a physical medicine guy, and uh He's like, you've got lightning in a bottle here, and you don't even know it. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, okay, so there's a number of different modalities. You can see it at vitalwarrior.org, and it it starts with um, far infrared. I, I coined this phrase myself: far infrared spectrum therapy, which is a far infrared sauna. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it catalyzes vitamin D3 in your system. D3. Okay, we're going to do a little sidebar here. Vitamin D3, if you're not getting at least a half hour of sunlight a day, you need to be supplementing vitamin D3, oil-based vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 uh, is responsible for converting tryptophan into uh, serotonin. If you don't have D3 in your system, you can't create serotonin, you can't create melatonin because you don't have any serotonin, and you can't get into stage three and four sleep and rebalance your system. It's one of the most important vitamins out there. So, serum. So, again, if you're not supplementing vitamin D3 or you're getting a half hour 
of sunlight a day, you need to address that immediately. And, and that's, a start half, to, that's a half hour of sunlight on exposed, exposed, body unprotected body. skin. Yeah. Okay. Um, Especially the genitals. They're particularly good at absorbing <laughs> sunlight and vitamin D. That's, that's scientific fact, everybody. So, you know, if someone sees you Scientifically out there, proven. To, <laughs> someone sees you out there nude. Absorb, like, Listen, create more D3 if you have I only got it. 26 minutes, so I had to expose my junk, you know? Because <laughs> we're running a little short on time. So that's a, that's a tip right here from the Warrior Pro Project. <laughs> that's awesome. Um so 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 not only does the farm for red spectrum therapy uh, uh create vitamin d3 in the system it catalyzes the effect because of the heat um now you go from that and you go into uh your myofascial release or the rolfing and your acupuncture they kind of have overlapping um benefits uh, some people don't like needles, so they could do the raw thing. Some people don't mind the needles, so and they don't like all that pain, so they could go do the acupuncture. So, uh, whatever floats your boat, we gotta, you know, curtail to all audiences, right? So, what that does is it'll lower cortisol in the system. It mitigates pain. I mean, you can look online for the benefits of acupuncture, and you'll you'll have enough to read the rest of your life. Um, so. Going in from acupuncture, we go into um, uh, the flotation therapy or float tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in order for the body to to utilize that vitamin D three, you have to have magnesium in the system. And where can you get that? Well, let's see. You're floating in a magnesium sulfate solution of uh, eight hundred to a thousand pounds of magnesium sulfate in this uh, sensory deprivation tank, which by the way, reducing outside stimulus helps heal myotraumatic brain injuries. Sure. So plus it's pushing your brainwave state, um, you know, in many cases towards from beta to alpha to theta, even in absolutely. that state, which is in a highly restorative brainwave state, um, similar to what the kind of states that you do get in those deeper phases of sleep. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why, you know, uh, an hour in a sensory deprivation tank is, uh, like three hours of REM sleep, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, so it's great. Don't do it before you go to bed though. Yeah. Otherwise you're, <laughs> you <will be> <laughs> you're going to be up all night. Um, but it, it's incredible. If you haven't experienced it, uh, I highly recommend you go do, um, flotation therapy. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal. I can't speak enough about it. Um, I, I believe Joe is Joe Rogan is a big proponent of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, our audience is pretty well versed in that. Our uh, our company on it is um, you know we have a far infrared in our facility here in Austin. We're invested in a float tank company. We're going to be coming out with our tanks from Zero Gravity Institute. We're uh, huge proponents of all that. Also cryotherapy and a few other modalities. Uh, Myofascial hmm. release. That's I mean, you're talking everything except for the acupuncture, which I've done personally myself, but everything else are all modalities that we recommend kind of constantly to, um, to everybody to go through that protocol. Yeah. See, uh, I see, I see an alignment in the future when we open up <laughs> our first center in San Diego. Indeed, yeah, indeed. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, so you put all those things together, you have an all inclusive reversal of that spiral. So you can start ascending a staircase instead of going down that spiral staircase. And um, for me, it, it, what I've learned is that it wasn't, it wasn't cost. I mean, you can't sustain going out and doing those, uh, all those different modalities on a veteran's budget. You just can't. It is, I mean, unless you get a really good civilian job, you know, so... Mm -hmm. Um, even then the cost is pretty hefty. So what I found is that, um, I, I set out to create centers across the nation that veterans, their families, first responders, pretty much anybody, uh, can go to, to, to go through this system of, uh, non-pharmaceutical hormonal rebalancing, you know, what have we coined? And right now, where, where are we in the grand scheme of things? We are... Um, I, I was going out and I was asking all these investors and, you know, we're not for profit. So, um, there's a lot of asking for money and 
doing all this stuff. And, and what I found is there's a lot of talk in, in, in the situation. There have been some extremely generous donors out there um, that, have, that have enabled us to carry out some small functions, but not to, not to the type that where we can you know, establish these facilities. So what I did is I started to just teach and get involved with um, these veterans communities in the Southern California area, but we want to do a lot more. So we need donations. We need, we need, we need backing to um, accomplish our ultimate objective, which is to establish those centers. The first one will be in San Diego, California. Um, there's a major hub of all services right there. And, um, and we have a great access to all the different modalities and the other organizations that we've been working with, building with over the last few years. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we're looking at uh, Norfolk, uh, uh, Little Creek, uh, Virginia Beach area for the second one. Uh, we're getting there. And, uh, yeah, but right now, if you go to vitalwarrior.org, it is a, an information-based site. Uh, you can reach out to us uh, through that website if you have questions. Uh, what we try to do is, uh, and we hold events, again, in the Southern California area, and uh, we post all that stuff on the Facebook page uh, when they're coming up for veterans. Ongoing free kundalini classes in Venice, California for veterans uh, and their families. Um, so and I, teach, I teach when I'm in town um, Sundays at, uh, 1630. Uh, hope to see you there. That's but, 430 uh, for you civilians, 430. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come in and, and Kundalini yoga, uh, a little bit about that. Um, so if you don't, if you don't do anything else, uh, establishing a good Kundalini yoga practice, uh, doesn't cost you anything. And, and, you, you can start meditating. That's free. You know, uh, you just need to, need to learn how, and, uh, we've got, we've got stuff online. We've got, you know, we're putting our, um, we're doing some web TV stuff through the Rama yoga Institute and that's Rama yoga Institute.com. And there's a, uh, there's free, uh, online Kundalini classes for veterans. There's, um, and, and that, that base of classes is getting broader. And so all you do is you find something that resonates with you and you do it every day. Mm -hmm. And, and through that dedication to your practice, you're, you're going to start opening up pathways and, and through opening those pathways, you gain an awareness. Kundalini yoga is also called the, the yoga of awareness. And, and what it is, is you begin, you become aware of where your what the subconscious landscape looks like and where those obstacles and negative thought projections are that are, that are broadcasting without you even knowing it. And then they'll afford you the opportunity to tear those apart, go around them and install programming and projections that serve your true purpose. And I guarantee you, um, once you find what that purpose is, that's half the fight right there. Knowing what that purpose is, once you find that purpose um, and you start driving towards it, it, it you, you will, all that other stuff that is plaguing your life will begin to fall lay, away and the, the cosmos will bend its will towards you achieving that purpose. Yeah, I back. am a walking, talking example of that um, in a relatively very short amount of time. Um, I have... Uh, I've had uh, great success in, in my acting career. Uh, three years I've been out of the military and, and I've been you know, uh, extremely blessed uh, to have discovered what that purpose for me is and that's to spread this awareness through film and television. Um, we have a film that's uh, getting ready to hit the streets. Uh, just came back from Sundance called Nine Line and uh, it's an awareness type film uh, about the, the, some of the things a veteran can encounter, um, when everything goes wrong, uh, after war. Mm. And, uh, it, it's a, it's a raw in your face look at, uh, what can happen, uh, if we let these things get out of control and, uh, and it's a plague that's, it's, that's hitting our nation 
hard and heavy. 22 veterans a day are killing themselves. And um, that's just from the 38 states that are required to report. Uh, so that number is probably more around like 36. Uh, so it's so I use film and television to uh, combat those types of issues, and it's uh, it's been incredible. I, I, I can't I can't begin to articulate uh, how grateful I am at having discovered this. Uh, and to be quite honest, uh, for having gone through the things that were merely preparation for what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. if you look at it that way, you know, so, uh, but everybody's got that story. Everybody out there has that story. And, and when you're looking for that purpose, uh, I, it, it will be in the realm of creativity always. I don't care what it is. You could be making baskets. <laughs> I don't care. You can make it, you know, but you will be creating in some way, shape or form. Right. If it's, uh, well, cause if that's, it's, that's what we are. It's a very true. Root. You know, we are creators when we're in line with our purpose. We like bringing things into life, facilitating that process. So it makes sense to be birthing something into the world. You know, that's what gives us our greatest fulfillment, whether that's something tangible like baskets or whether that's something intangible like joy, awareness, um, any of these things, you know, birthing that an idea into the world that, that generally is going to feel the best for people. And I also wanted to, you know, kind of touch on, we've talk, talked a lot about veterans, but this process applies to everybody, not just veterans. I mean, veterans have um, a particularly strong challenge ahead of them based upon what they've had to experience. Um, but everybody has, you know, not maybe not everybody, but almost everybody has some degree of post-traumatic stress, whether it's emotionally related from something that happened with your parents or a lover or a girlfriend or um, with business or however that is, something that they haven't looked at the, the, with the light of consciousness in the right way to be able to move past some trauma baggage that they're carrying. And then, you know, many, many of us are f facing these adrenal, um, adrenal burnout symptoms and these stress symptoms from not managing um, this kind of constant level of stress that's through our life. And I know that's, you know, that's a battle that I fight daily as well as, you know, CEO of a pretty big company. Um, you know, that kind of management of stress is one of the most important things I can do. And it's a variety of modalities. Yoga is a great one. Floating is a great one. Um, you know, training is another one that can help when done in, in, in the right way. Um, so many of these things can, can contribute. And so you don't have to be a veteran to follow this path and, and take up, um, you know, this opportunity. That's absolutely correct. Um, you know, we just start with the veterans community because of that, um, for the obvious reasons, yeah, you know, where, sure. where my heart is, is and everything. The need is the strongest, you know, in, I mean, in it, it's also our defense, you know what I mean? So this isn't just a recovery uh, system. This is also a performance-based system. So if you are a competitor, if you're, if you're in any type of competitive type environment, this simply makes whatever you're doing better, infinitely better, I might add. Mm. And it will accelerate that, that success without a doubt. Um, think about it. If you can pull somebody from the jaw, if somebody can pull themselves from, you know, the, the jaws of hell, think about what it'll do if you're not even there. Right. You know, right. you know, it's just going to launch you uh, even further into your purpose and uh, whatever it is you're you're seeking to achieve. Another one of the modalities that you may not have heard of is called tension release exercises. It's developed by Dr. David Berselli, and it is a phenomenal way to discharge stress from the system in a relatively short amount of time. Um, immediate effects um, when you have a successful session, and what it is is it's a simple series of. Uh, six exercises that uh, allow you to create um, what's called a neurogenic tremor in the body. Um, and through that mechanism, that normal mechanism within the organism, it uh, discharges stress via the central nervous system. So um, how does it work? Well, it's, uh, you can look on vitalwarrior.org and, and, and see uh, some, some amplifying information about it. But um, if you, if you look at a, anybody that has, uh, experienced a traumatic event or even animals, you know, that are, are terrified from somebody trying to tag it, you know, they shoot it and 
and they sleep and when they get up you know their their legs are starting to twitch and you know or, or after surgery mm-hmm. you know if you experience surgery you're like shaking after the surgery that's called a neurogenic tremor and that's the body's normal way of discharging stress from the system well we tend to shut that down you know like we got to knock that off you know especially in the you know the warrior mindset um we, we, we feel like we have to shut that down. And uh, it's simply not the case. You know, we are, um, one second. we are, okay, I got, sorry about that. No um, we are, we are, we can absolutely utilize that to, to on a day-to-day basis to discharge stress from the day. Or stress that we've been holding since we were a child because we like fell off our bike and like you know smacked our face into a curb, you know, hmm. um, uh, and it's uh, it's incredibly powerful. And uh, so, what's the what's the gist of it? Is just um, yeah. So, <laughs> so what happens is is you basically after you do these exercises, you lay down in the um, in the, in the posture and. You're completely relaxed, and what happens is you start to uh, experience what you know. You know how like your legs shake when they start to get tired and everything like that when right. you're doing squats or something. And and well, what happens? You start to feel that, except the fatigue's not there, and and that mechanism starts to move up and through the body, and it starts to um, unravel. First thing it does is it sends out a signal throughout the your, your body that you know what's going on. It, and it analyzes what's going on, and it'll relax, and then and then it starts to move of its own accord. I know it sounds crazy, <laughs> but you're not doing anything. You're just like you're just like along for the ride. It's one of the few times that we just let go and let the body figure out what's. It's infinitely more intelligent than we are, so the body will figure out what it needs to do to heal itself. And uh, until you've experienced it, if you're just hearing it. Um, it, it's going to be, <laughs> it, it'll sound kind of weird. Uh, but uh, there's there's countless videos online that you can look uh, up. Uh, just look up uh, trauma release exercises by David Berselli. And uh, look at some of the things that that man's done with... Um, with this with this modality cool and it's one of the it's one of the core modalities of outer warrior yeah, as like well to, i'd like to check that out sounds like something that happens to me when i take too many mushrooms actually <laughs> 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 i think i'm doing that subconsciously but you're we'll in take austin, a look at the video right? yeah i'm in austin well i i go to, i go down to dallas frequently uh cool we're, we're shooting a, a a film down there and um Next time I'm down, we're going to have to connect, and I can run you through a session. I'm Absolutely. a level two yeah, facilitator, that'd so. That'd be great. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely have to link up. And when uh, when these centers come around, you know, we'd be happy to donate these tanks at cost and uh, and, and get them set up. I mean, this is a, a really important cause, so anything that we can do to contribute would be great. That's outstanding, and and we really appreciate it. It's people like you that are going to make it possible, you know. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, possible for – you know, countless veterans that uh, and their families that'll be able to go through here. Um, you know, at all civilians as well, first responders. You know, anybody mm. that uh, that has CEOs of companies that are, yeah. are continually stressed out. You know, whoever, make those CEOs pay. We're gonna give. We'll give it free to the other people taking care of us. But us CEOs, <laughs> we can pay. We can pay our well, way it, in there. <laughs> the way the way we're breaking it down is, um, I, I think that the center will probably be commercial, and then we pay the. Right. Um, so through Vital Warrior itself, yeah. we'll we will you know uh, pay for people to go through the center. Yeah, makes uh, sense. You know, qualified persons. Makes sense. Um, so that's well, the way we'll do it. This was awesome information, and you're doing a noble task that is much needed. And uh, on behalf of all of us, you know, definitely appreciate everything that you've done and everything that you're doing, man. It's 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 awesome to hear. Well, thank you very much for having me on uh, and giving me a chance to get out to a larger larger audience. Uh, this message, you know, and helping me fulfill my purpose. <laughs> Indeed, my friend. Indeed. So vitalwarrior.org, you got the new film coming out. What's the name of the film again? The film's called Nine Line. I Nine actually have Line. four releases this year, uh, film, but that's the most important film. Uh, right. that, Check that, that out. Sh- and then uh, what about social media? Where can people keep up with you? Uh, Mikal Vega is my uh, Facebook page. And then uh, same name for uh, Twitter and Instagram. 
Beautiful. Well, thank you very much, my friend. We're definitely going to have to link up either in Dallas or Southern California, and maybe I can take a class with your first Kundalini instructor. That sounds fun. <laughs> that'd be that'd be outstanding. Let's do it. All right. All right, my friend. We'll talk soon. All right. Out. All right. Take care.